29 בנובמבר 1947. Everybody has to find their own path to Judaism, even when one grows up orthodox, like Professor Susan Stone, an expert on, and enthusiast of, Jewish law. For me, the intellectual is the way in. Ideas are the way in. We all get into the Jewish tradition from different avenues, and for me, it's through ideas. So what was the course that brought you there? It's an odd course. I actually have an orthodox education, and then I found myself in the university setting. I was at Princeton, and I was in love with the field of Midrash. Magic, Midrash, literature, fantasy, rabbinic fantasy, mythology, and then somehow or another I was in law school thinking about uh, ways in which law tames all of those ideas. And uh, as a way to, when I went into legal academics, I found that I couldn't write except about something that I loved, and so I ditched all of my grand ideas about international law and wound up writing about uh, the rabbinic tradition, again, but from a different perspective. This time the perspective was not so much to find uh, pieces of non-normative thinking in the rabbinic tradition, but to take more seriously the law itself, but to look at the underlying philosophical conceptions that were behind the rules. When one says Jewish law, it sounds as if we're talking about something very monolithic, but when you, once you start looking into it, I mean, there used to be a Babylonian tradition, and a, an Israeli tradition, an Egyptian tradition, all unto its own. We could narrow it even further. There's the law of the Mishnah, the law of one Talmud, the law of right. another Talmud, the law of each community. And Beit Shammai and Beit Jirel, exactly. We could do all that. But one of the things that legal thinkers do is they look at a tradition from the inside and they try to make sense of it so that they can use it for the next case and the next argument. And that means that you have to make, you have to try to grasp a concept in which you can fit a lot of material in, no matter how diverse. And that's important because that's how traditions evolve. Traditions evolve because people look backwards and they try to read all the material, they try to read it coherently. They try to think, how does all this diverse material from so many different places, with so many different motivations, how can it talk to it, one another? How can these sources talk to one another and think that they're in the same conversation? And in order to do that, you've got to try to conceptualize it. Think about what the underlying concepts might be. Even if there are a few concepts and they're in tension with one another, they're still talking to one another. So what, what are the, some of the characteristics that will make Jewish law different from other sets of laws, other codes of law? First of all, you have a legal system that's structured around the concept of obligation as opposed to the concept of a right. Okay. That makes for a very different idea about how people are knitted together. It makes for a very different notion of how you take something like law and moral concerns and weave them together in a way that's still functional and that doesn't reduce itself to solely a system of ethics. It's a very important concept that we think about a lot in American legal systems. We think about whether we can impose obligations like a duty to rescue. How do you do it in a live functioning legal system without being overly moralistic or making it impractical? Actually, the Jewish legal system thought about that a lot, and it did it. And do you think that Jewish law could be used in today's context? Do I'm less interested in, in deriving any kind of rules from Jewish law. What I'm interested in is that it has concepts that could be of use. It has concepts about what is the role of the individual in the collective, what is the collective, how do you define it, how do you relate um, uh, the idea of what a conventional society ought to abide by, what kind of aspirations you might have for having a uh, more aspirational community. And could these concepts be um, torn away from the theological question that because a lot of Jewish law is centered around the belief in one God and his commandments and so forth, or her commandments, whatever. I think it could, I, I definitely think it could be torn away from the theological, though it's an excellent question because it, you need to think about the theological to understand sometimes the particular philosophical perspective. But that theological notion is not a rude notion or a, or a simple notion of, you know, God said X. The rabbis long ago understood, right? Nitsuni banai nitsuni. Nitsuni banai nitsuni banai. What we do understand is that there's a core 
canonical material that's viewed as received from Sinai. Every legal system has core canonical material that you can't overturn. And what you need to do is to learn in every legal system how to live under authority through interpretation. Well, you know, it begs the question, how does one live under authority? <laughs>